you. I don't believe anybody can stand up to Jesus, but we'll, we'll try to hang in there with him today. You're going to be so glad you came to this service this afternoon. God began to speak to me about this ser- service. And I, I just had so many services the last few days that I, I, I'm kind of running behind. Usually I'm, I'm, I'm ahead and God's talked to me, gets me ready for each service, speaks to me. You know, I, I don't. Uh, it just takes all that for me to do what, I, what God wants me to do. He has to get me my mind right, talk to me, get me focused in. But the only time I had to focus for this service was on the way up here. And uh, it's the shortest amount of time I've ever uh, listened to God prepared. I preached um, uh, Friday, Friday night, two times on Saturday, and, uh, and then twice this morning, and then this afternoon, and then... Um, uh, and then t- tonight, and then I'll be off for two days, and then I'll preach Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then twice on Sunday, or maybe three, I'm not sure yet. So, and then I'll head back home for a little, praise God, a little three days of, you know, uh, just being na- a normal, average guy. And then back in, I go again. So it's nothing but fun. It's all just awesome stuff. Oh, it's because of the time and everything, I want to get right into it. And um, I'm going to try to just, if you'll just believe God with me and, and just as, you, as your faith grows and as you believe in what God's telling you in this service, it takes less and less of me. And, and so if you'll just activate your faith and just start believing God, it's not going to cost you anything. If you want to doubt, pout, and have stinking thinking when you leave, you can do that when you leave. But if you'll just have it right, have faith right now in this service. And, and believe God, we can really get to what God wants to do because God wants to do some great things for family by 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 family. That's what the Lord told me. He said, this service is about families. If you were to win, uh, there are five uh, families in this service today that if, if, if this church won the members of just these five families of this church, that you would absolutely have to have a new building. It, it would just, that's all it would take is just five miracles to create five families totally just breaking forth and coming to God. Hallelujah. And, and I believe God's going to do that. I believe that's what God wants to do. I want to preach to you something. I want you to listen to it. I want you to believe it. It's for you. Don't think it's for somebody else. God said it's for every person in this service. So when I start speaking it and, and telling you what God wants to do, I want you to lay hold of it, and I want you to get a hold of it. I'm not, I'm not going to exaggerate one iota. Not one thing I'm going to say this afternoon is an exaggeration. If I have to exaggerate about God, He's not God. And I don't have to exaggerate about God. And uh, everything he does is just off the chain. It's just crazy. It's just, you know, it's just out there in, in the atmosphere. And, and we don't never have to make anything up. Matter of fact, the honest truth is most of the time I bring it down a little bit just so you can wrap your mind around what I'm telling you that you won't doubt it. Some of the biggest things that ever happened to me, I don't tell you anybody. But my wife and just a handful because you just go, oh, come on. Are you serious? And, and if I was to tell you that I've, I've seen God put teeth in people's mouth. And I've seen God put white enamel where cavities were. See? Wh- what? You know, I, I've literally seen that happen. And uh, God put parts in that wasn't there. Things that wasn't even there. God put things in there. And those are called creative miracles. And they're the greatest miracles of all when God puts something. Now, when God fixed something, that's a miracle. But when God puts something that's not there, that's called a creative miracle. And, and it's pretty wild. It's pretty crazy. One girl that was born without parts of her back, she said she felt it just go like, it's like a dominoes. And I said, I called her out. I said, you got, you were born without certain things in your back. And I said, they're called, the nickname is called tabs, but they're, they have another name. And I said, God's going to put those uh, tabs back in your back. We laid hands on her. And she testified and said that one by one, they just went right down her spine. And her mother went up there and rubbed her back and could feel the tabs on the back of her spine that wasn't there before. And, uh, and those are creative miracles of God. And what we need to do is just, you know, if I tell God this. When I ask God for something, I tell you, God, I'm believing you for it right now. But I'm going to tell you something, the Lord. Lord, I'm not like everybody else. If you don't do it right away, I'm still going to love you, and I'm not going to blame you for nothing. Hallelujah. And I'm not going to get mad, stomp my feet, and say, I'm going to say, Lord, if you don't never touch me again, I'm going to be right here believing, telling everybody about you and everything that you do. He loves that kind of stuff. Hallelujah. You understand? He's crazy about that. When I call my wife and say, pick me up, I'm at the airport, and I go, take, take your time. 
She loves that kind of stuff. <laughs> and she shows up. I go to Burger King or McDonald's, and I'll get my order, and I'll say, y'all take your time. They'll go, what? What'd you say? Like I'm speaking in a different language. I said, take your time. I'm in no hurry. Well, because of that, they go, I, they just look, they look at me, and they're getting my stuff. You see, God loves that stuff. Okay, let's look at Job. I'm going to read one verse of Scripture, and I'm going to be talking about segments of the book of Job. And um, uh, I, I, I'll be honest with you, it's, it's not my most favorite message to preach to anybody, the subject I'm preaching on, but it's, it's what God told me to do. It's what I'm going to preach. I'm going to preach what God told me. It's not gloom and doom. It's faith and things of that nature. But I, I like to talk about faith and the miraculousness of faith, and I will do that. But I'm going to preach what God told me to preach. I'm going to preach it to you, and I'm going to believe with all my heart it's going to happen. And I want you to claim it, everybody in this church. Now, I've got to remind myself that there is a 4 o'clock deadline in this church. pastor did not tell me last week. And I was so surprised when God cut my electricity off. I'm telling you all, last week, right, he just he turned it off. And I'm just standing there and went, what happened? It was God knew, hey, you're going to have to shut your mouth, man. These people got to leave. But nobody told me, honestly, or if the pastor told me, I didn't remember it. So I've got that in my mind right now, that we've got a 330 deadline to get everything out of here. Okay, let's look at Job chapter number 1. In one verse of Scripture, chapter chapter 1, verse number 10. Job 1 and 10. Hast not thou made a hedge about him and about his house... And about all that he hath on every side. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands. His substance is increased in the land. I want to preach about the power of the hedge. The power of the hedge. God's going to tell you something that when he told me, first told me about it, I told him, I'm not telling nobody. Let them learn their self. And God promised me. If you don't tell them, he said, I'll snatch your hedge down so fast. I said, I'm telling everybody. <laughs> He's got every one of our numbers. Don't say he don't. He does. He can make us snap to attention. So let's pray. Reach over, grab someone by the hand, and I want you to start praying for them right now that God's going to put a hedge around their families. Start praying it for about 30 seconds right now. Let me take my coat off and get comfortable. Everybody start praying. I want to hear your voice. Raise it up right now and believe God and start calling on the name of Jesus and start getting this hedge around your ministry, around your families, around your health. All right, you may be seated. I love this church, man. <laughs> it's a Holy Ghost church. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I, 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 can, I can groove and jive in here, man. I just feel it. I, praise God. I, 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 like, I like preaching here. It's a lot of faith, and your pastor's doing a great job, and, and he's, a, he's a faith builder. He believes in, in the things of God, and he's doing a great work. I, I, the Lord spoke this to me. Matter of fact, I'll be honest with you. I was actually really in Los Angeles when God spoke to me about this, this scripture. When God spoke to me about this dimension of faith, the dimension of the hedge that God puts around us. And uh, I was, uh, uh, you know, it's my custom, and I didn't do it this morning. I didn't have time. Church at nine o'clock, and you know, and I had to kind of pack for the whole day. A couple shirts and ties and blah 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 blah, and a. Uh, so uh, this morning, no, no McDonald's for Brother Winslow this morning. And I, I read my today's scripture yesterday. And I got my, my Bible reading for the date so that I can complete the whole Bible in a year. And I got that done yesterday. That's something I do every year, read the Bible through completely cover to cover. And I go over sometimes, do a little bit. This year I'm going to try to do two times, twice through the Word of God. I've never done that before, and I'm going to try to do that this year. And, and I'm going to set on precedent to do that. But I, I got up uh, this morning in Los Angeles a while back, and, and uh, I was preaching uh, uh, 22 services in 24 days. Uh, I had a long schedule. I was in the middle of that schedule. And, um, and so I, I got up that morning, and Sister Winslow was with me and traveling with me at that time. She was out of school and able to go with me. And so uh, w w she's not used to that much church. Now, I'm geared for it. I'm telling you right now. Uh, I, now that I did, uh, if I do four today, I'll be looking for five. I don't know how I'm going to do five. I've got to find somebody that starts church at five o'clock in the morning. Hallelujah. 
That'd be cool. Wouldn't it be cool just to have church at five in the morning? Just to say you did it. Huh? Just tell all these Laodicean folks that we had church at five o'clock one morning. But anyway, we'd have to have donuts for sure. But uh, I got up that morning. I told Sister Winslow, so we didn't have a lot of church. And I said, just sleep in, honey, and just take it easy. And, and uh, I said, I'm going to run down to McDonald's, get my coffee, and do my Bible reading. And, well, when I go, I always take a notepad, ink pen, and my iPad. And uh, I'm old school, new school. I go either way you want to go. If you want to roll old school, I roll out with you. If you want to go new school, I can push buttons and do all kind of stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm with whoever you are. And uh, so I had my Bible. I had my read the Bible through. I had all this stuff. And so I, I get my coffee, order my coffee and my sausage, my muffin, no cheese. And uh, and so I, I go, uh, I'm on my way to sit down and the Lord speaks to me. He said, I want you to read the book of Job today. And I said, well, Lord, I two things why I don't want to do it. I said, now, if you make me, I'll do it. But I don't really want to read the book of Job. Number one is, that's not my reading schedule for today. Number two is, who wants to go to the book of Job? I said, I am Job. I don't want to read about Job. I am Job. And I said, I don't want to read about Job. Take me to Matthew. Revelation is even okay. Scary as that is. And uh, he said, I want you to start reading. First verse, first chapter, and don't stop till I tell you. All right, I'm sitting there, I'm drinking my coffee, and I'm reading the book of Job. It took a couple of cups to get there. And I, I, can you believe it? I sat there in McDonald's and read the book of Job from front to back completely. All the book of Job, and not one word from God. Not one thing. I go to chapter, when I get to about chapter 10, I'm going, well, Hello? If I'm not in the area, send me to the area. And so I read the whole book of Job. Everything God does for a purpose and a reason. If you just start watching that, if you're praying for rain and it sun shines, make note there's a purpose. There's something to be learned in that. If you're asking for a miracle and it hasn't happened yet, just hang on, watch, and see when God does it, how he does it, how perfect the timing of God is. And um, so... I'm reading the book of Job, and I'm blah, 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 blah. I'll go through it. I've read the book of Job many times. I don't like the book of Job. And uh, he loses his kids, his wife. He's got sores breaking out all over him. And I mean, this, this dude stinks. He's terrible, and just it's a bad day for Job. And so I'm reading all these things, and I don't hear God doesn't say one word to me. And I get through it, and caffeine's kicking in. Man, I'm jittery. I'm ready to go run a race. And... and uh, and uh, they're serving lunch now, and 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 uh, I want to go get I want to go get a, a, a fish sandwich with double sauce. And uh, so I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I just read the book of Job, and you didn't say one word to me. What is it that you want to tell me? Maybe that wasn't your voice. I thought for sure it was. Well, I guess I read the book of Job. I guess I got a little extra reading in. About that time, the Lord spoke to me and he said, for 40 years, you asked me a question 40 years ago that I never answered you. And today, I'm going to answer that question. Amen. When he said that, I immediately, I'm, I'm trying not to cry. <laughs> it's so emotional, you know, the whole thing. And as soon as he said that, before he said that, I didn't know. I could have never guessed what it was. Forty years had gone by. But as soon as he said, you asked me something 40 years ago and I never answered you and I'm going to answer you today. And I knew what it was. Why do you let the hedge down and allow things to come into my life? I asked him that 40 years ago. Things that I know you could keep from me. Things that wouldn't happen to my family, my kids, my children, to my ministry. Why do you let the hedge come down? That's what I asked God. And he never would ever tell me. For 40 years, he never told me why. He said, you're going to want to write this down because I'm going to give you five things that the hedge of God is made of. That's what he told me. And when I tell you what these five things are, you will be able... To put a hedge up around anybody, any church, any ministry, 
any of your children, your ministry, your family at any time. Because a man that knows what the hedge is made of can create that hedge by speaking and believing and praying. When I reveal faith, when I reveal power, when I reveal love to people, they're able to perform and operate in that dimension. Like I show a man how to pastor or how to preach or how to evangelize. We may go to school to learn some things, but we don't learn how to preach at school. School doesn't teach you how to preach. God teaches you how to preach. You can learn about God in the setting of the class, but it's God that teaches you how to operate in faith and how to pastor and how to have a dominion over things that come against your city or your church. Your pastor is not pastoring this church. He is pastoring a region. His dominion doesn't just exist over this church, but His dominion exists over a region around here. And it depends on what God tells Him or how much that dimension is. So the Lord told me that I knew what it was. And I knew it was there in the book of Job about the hedge. The hedge of God. And when you look at verse 10, you'll see that the hedge of God is impregnable. And that's one of the things that really made me question God. If the hedge cannot be broken in, if the hedge keeps the enemy out, then why are you letting the enemy get in and attack me and come against my family? And, of course, through the years, I've learned he's not going to tell me. So I ignore all that stuff, and I just believe God. And whatever comes, I don't complain. I don't try to figure things out. and I just walk with God. But now God says, I'm going to show you what my hedge consists of. And you're going to start praying the hedge every day around your family. And miracles that have not happened are going to start happening in your life because you pray the power of the hedge. And then he told me to look at verse 10. He said, the hedge is impregnable. It cannot be broken. It doesn't just cover you. It covers everything around your house. And it covers the works of your hands. The increase of the land. Everything is affected by the hedge of God. And your healing can take place today just simply because you activate the hedge of God around you. And God drives out of inside of that hedge sickness. Wouldn't it be awesome if nobody had to lay hands on you this afternoon and the hedge of God went up around you and healing began to flow into your body and into your mind and into your spirit and your checking account and your bills and your relationship and your family begin to be touched by the power of a hedge that was going up around. I'm telling you right now, God wants to put a hedge up around you, around your house, around your family, around your life. Turn to somebody and say, I want God's hedge around me before I leave this service. And I believe in a moment in this church, God's going to put a hedge up. So God told me the five things. He spoke five things to me. He told me the five things of the hedge. I was weeping. I was crying. The little girl that worked at McDonald's looked at me and said, Are you okay? Do you need some more coffee? I said, Oh, I don't, I don't need no more coffee. She said, Well, are you all right? Did you get bad news? I said, No, I didn't get bad news. I said, You see, that's a Bible. She said, Yeah. I said, It's touching me right now. She went. (laughs) Never said another word to me. That man over there is being touched by a book. I never thought about what that sounded like. And and I just wept and cried as, as I wrote these things down. I wrote them right here on my Bible. This Bible I've got right here. I've got the original things I wrote down that God spoke to me. He said, my people are going to put hedges up in these last days, and the rest of your ministry will be a ministry of hedges. And and immediately, uh, I, I went in the Holy Ghost, and it just locked in on me. I mean, it just became a part of everything that I was. He said, there are five things, and I'm going to give you these five things right now. I don't. There's no way I could preach them to you. You preach them to yourself. Here are the five things that the hedge consists of. In chapter number one of Job, it is supernatural stuff everything in there the number of of uh, job's children is the number of 10 and 10 is the number of, of dominion 
Look at, he had uh, 3,000 camels, 500 uh, yoke of ox, and 500 she uh, donkeys. I almost said that word. And a very great, my mother won't let me say that. <laughs> if she heard me read out of the Bible, she'd be mad at me. See how quick I just stopped right there, boom. And a very great household, so that the man that was the greatest of all the men of the East, he was the greatest man of all the East. Well, all through this is the dimension of supernatural. And the Lord spoke to me, Psalms 34 and 7 says, The angels of God encamp round about them that fear God. And the Lord said, The beginning of every hedge is the fear of God and the operation of angels in their life. And I remember the day that the Lord spoke to me and said, You're afraid to admit that you believe in angels. You won't talk about angels in the church. You won't preach about them because you're afraid somebody is going to make light of your ministry. And he said, you can't do that. You can't pick and choose what you believe in. You've got to believe it all. And he said, I forbid you ever again to shun away from, to be afraid, to tell people of angels that's visit you and angels you've seen in the service and angels that's been on the platform. Last night, a woman came up and said, there were two men standing behind you that appeared. I said, they're angels. And I told them what those angels were for. Well, there had been a time I just looked at her and said, well, pray about it. And I would have said a word to her about it. But God said, you've got to embrace the ministry of angels. You've got to believe in them. Just because some churches take angels and go to the nth degree with them doesn't mean. The Bible says we all have angels that are given to those who are heirs of salvation. The angels of God bring messages. The angels of God fight uh, battles for all of us. We're not to worship angels. We're not to go around believing they're the deities uh, of heaven. But angels are real. And the Lord said, my hedge consists of supernaturalness. Now, I know one thing about Pastor. He is a supernatural dude. And he believes in supernatural stuff. You can be a preacher and have a church and not really believe in the supernatural, but this guy believes in the supernatural. He believed the axe head swam. He believes the Red Sea parted. He believes the supernatural and the Word of God happened. He believes every line, every paragraph, every book of the Bible, that it was the Word of God and it was miraculous and miracles. He believes that miracles are going to build this church and that the miracle God is presiding in this congregation and working in this place. You've got a miracle pastor and you better thank God you've got one like that. Now, I'm not talking about running around and, you know, acting goofy and, and, you know, just seeing flying saucers and little green men running everywhere. I, I preach a message of angels, demons, and UFOs. And, and I talk about the difference in real spirituality and some of this stuff that's just, it's just emotion. It's just crazy stuff. And there is a difference. And, uh, and the Lord said, you, this church must believe in the supernatural. Because the angels represent the supernaturalness of God. And they encamp round about them that fear Him. And if you want a hedge around your children, you better start believing in the supernatural. And I mean start embracing what God is doing in this church and what God's doing in the Word of God. If it's in that Bible, I'm going to believe it to the day I die. It's the Word of God. It's supernatural. It supersedes natural things. It goes beyond the ordinary, the, the explainable. I don't know how many times I've seen people healed, go to the doctor, and the doctor try their best to explain away the miracle that just happened there in that building, in that church. You cannot explain away the supernatural. There's not but one thing you can do to the supernatural, and that's believe in it. And you need to get into some supernatural worship. I'm not preaching to everybody. There's some that already do it. But everybody in this church, when they come to church, ought to experience supernatural worship and supernatural praise. With your mind gets in the hand of God and you're, you're, you forget about your problems for a while and you just get lost in the Spirit of God and you worship God. When they anoint with oil that you believe that somebody's getting healed, that you believe that God speaks to the man of God and gives him messages and there's a divine force with this church and behind this church that's going to motivate this church. That's supernaturalness. And there are angels that go every place we go and they're in this church, but they encircle round about us. Psalms 34 and 7. Angels encamp round about them that fear God. 
And then in this chapter number one, you'll find that when Satan convinced God to take the hedge down, I'm going to talk about that in just a minute, why God lets hedges come down. And he dropped the hedge down and Satan came in and he began to attack Job. If you look at this and recognize what is the first thing that was the priority of the devil to come against Job with, what was it that he wanted to happen first? Because the first attack denotes the importance of that attack. It's something he fears. It's something he's afraid of. That if he can get his hands on it, he thinks he can wrestle away from you what God has got for you. And the first thing he took away was the blood sacrifices. He didn't attack anything but the blood first. The first thing that fell was the animals. Job chapter 1 says, Job every day offered sacrifices unto God. Every day he took an animal and he slayed it. And that was a type of the blood of Jesus Christ. And the second thing that your head consists of is the blood of Jesus Christ. You should pray that blood every day. You should plead that blood every day. You should believe in that blood every day. Every day of my kid's life, when they were little kids at sleep at night, I'd go in that room, I'd kiss them on the cheek, and then I would pray the blood of Jesus over every one of them in Jesus' name. And I believe because of that hedge of blood that I prayed around them, they're serving God right now. They're living for God. They're raising their families in the fear of God. They've got a healthy faith, a healthy belief in the Lord and in the uh, preachers and in the kingdom of God because that blood was over them. They escaped harm and hurt and danger all their life because God had that blood on their life. If you've got a teenager that's in a wayward way right now, when they're sleeping, go in there and pray the blood over them. Anoint their tennis shoes. Anoint something that belongs to them with oil and pray and say, oh God I plead the blood over them right now. Satan, you have no power against the blood. The devil fears the blood. He fears the blood in this church. I know we're Holy Ghost oriented and we're driven by spiritual things, but you better not forget the blood. The first thing that Satan wanted to bring down from the hedge of Job was that blood that he was sacrificing unto the Lord. The blood will set you free to have faith. It's one of the five components of the God faith. One of the components of the God faith, which is greater than your faith, is the blood of Jesus Christ. The God faith consists of the Word, the blood, the Spirit, the name of Jesus. And the fifth one is obedience. When you put those five together in any setting, in any circumstance, the faith of God will show up immediately. And the blood is part of the God faith. Think about this. When you get ready to believe God for something, what does the enemy tell you? You messed up. You sinned. You did this. You didn't do that. But when you put the blood on you, when the enemy comes, there's nothing there for him to put his finger on. And I don't care if it was 15 minutes ago. It's not there anymore. If you believe in the blood of Jesus Christ, that it washes clean and white as snow, clap your hands to the Lord and say, I believe in it. Then the Lord spoke to me about Job 22 and 27. And in those scriptures, those verses are three things that make up the five, the five things that the heads consist of. He told Job in 22 and 27 to make prayers, to pray unto him. And the Lord, I'm sitting there at that table at McDonald's, and I'm not looking in the Bible. The Lord's speaking these things. I just read them. But he's speaking them to me. And I'm turning there, and I'm looking at what he's telling me, and there they are. He said, the third thing is prayer. Your hedge is filled with your prayers. I heard a great man of God say one time, and I know what he means, and I understand it, but he should have clarified it just a little more. I'm sure there's plenty of things I could have clarified in my ministry. But he said, you should pray one time and believe. And I understand what he's saying. But the truth is, nowhere in the Bible do you pray one time and then absolutely stop praying. The Bible says over again, pray without ceasing. Make your petition known unto God. Cornelius in chapter 10 of Acts said every day he sent up 
a prayer unto God about salvation, about the things of God. And he kept bombarding heaven. And one day the Lord said, my God, there's another prayer from Cornelius. Go down there and, and, and do these things he's asking of. The, uh, uh, the, uh, Daniel, uh, Daniel in the book of Daniel cried out to God three times a day. Twenty-one days went by and finally his answer showed up. But he didn't stop praying. He prayed every day. When even the king and his men said no one prayed to any god or any king but this king. He still prayed unto God. Your prayers, your daily prayers, every whispered prayer, every prayer. You've got to get what I'm telling you right now. Every pray, prayer you pray. I don't care if it's a two-second prayer or a two-minute prayer or a two-hour prayer. Every prayer you pray enables, empowers, impacts, and makes your wall thicker and bigger in Jesus' name. We should be people of prayer every day and any time, any moment we can pray and seek the face of God. Anything that stops you from praying is your enemy and God will give you power over that to stop that which tries to stop you. If it's a sin, the blood covers it. If it's an enemy, God will give you power over it. If it's a circumstance, God will turn it around. In those same group of verses, the Bible says, He told uh, Job, make vows unto me and keep your vows. A vow is something. I'm not the pastor and I'm not going to preach pastoral. But a vow is your giving. Vow is your church attendance. Vow is the things you promised God and God asked you to do. He asked you to come to this church. That's a vow. He asked you to support this ministry. That's a vow. He asked you to love one another. That's a vow. He asked you to forgive each other. That's a vow. And God told Job, your prayer and your uh, the blood and the supernaturalness and the hedge also has in it all your vows that you make unto God. This is how the Lord operates. It's your turn, God's turn. Your turn, God's turn. Your turn, God's turn. The Bible said, draw nigh unto God. He will draw nigh unto you. The Bible says, give unto God. He'll give back to you, press down, running over. It's your turn, God's turn, your turn, God's turn, your turn, God's turn. If you're in this church and nothing's happening and you just seem like you're on an island by yourself, it might not be God's turn. It might be your turn. And you need to find out what God wants you to do and take your turn because then it's going to be God's turn. And so the keeping of vows are very important. Uh, unto God. And then comes that fifth thing, that final thing uh, in that grouping of scriptures in uh, 22, 27. And the Lord's, and it's the thing that we Pentecost have the hardest thing to, 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 the hardest problem with. And that is making decrees. A decree is what you speak, what you say. And uh, uh, I, I mean, with the help of the Holy Ghost, I, I've been able to uh, overcome all my negative talking and things of that nature. Have you ever asked instruction to go somewhere and, and they'll say, go down to the red light and turn right. But they never say, go to the green light. It's always red. If you told somebody, go down to the green light, and turn left, they would keep going because they, would, they, they don't see green. They see red. It's a red light. It's a red light. It's a red light. It's a red light. Because that's just the way humanity is. We conceive everything in the most negative, most, most doubtful uh, circumstance. You're sitting on these chairs right now, and you're fearing things that will never, ever happen to you. I don't have to pray about it because they're not going to happen. Because your fears and your enemy has created this phobia that you've got of these things that's going to happen to you. And you have to learn how to speak faith and become a faith speaker. Now, if you get up and you say something negative, it's not supposed to be so bad that everybody jumps on you and go, Oh, you just said red light. No, get the spirit of what I'm telling you. And don't, don't go around, you know, if you say something a little negative or something like that, and things of that nature, I mean, that's just the way it is. I was driving to a, a conference and there was someone going with me and we're driving along and... He said, Brother Winslow said, you're going over the speed limit. The speed limit dropped you, and you're going to get a ticket. And as soon as he said that, I just I, want, I was going to tell him, don't ever tell me I'm getting a ticket. Tell me to slow down. But don't ever speak that to me. I mean, I'm, I, I don't act like that around you guys. But, but, but in my dominion, it's faith. 
I won't condemn anybody, but, you know, I said, don't, about that time, the blue light came on behind me. I looked at him and I said, this is your fault. <laughs> That's deflecting blame. You know, that's pretty cool, huh? I'm speeding, but this is your fault. And uh, and he said, oh, Brother Wesley, do you think I got, I've got you a ticket? I said, well, no, there you go again. I said, praise God, I'm not claiming a ticket. I'm believing God right now that I'm not getting a ticket. And so down the window goes, and let me have your registration. I hand to the cop. You know how those guys look. Man, they got that, that look, I'm going to get you, sucker. You, you, I've been looking for you. That hat's tilted a certain way. You can't see his eyes, the glasses. There's no hair on his head. I mean, it's a, it's a bad deal. And uh, always rigid and big and robotic and, it, it, you know. And so I'm just looking at him and I said, oh, God, if there's anything you can do, would you tell me what to say? And the Lord said, if you'll listen to me and do what I tell you, you will not get a ticket. This was a highway patrol in California, and I mean, they, they hardly ever let you off. And I remember hearing the words ringing in my ears. Everybody saying, oh, get off. More negativism. And so I look at him. He said, where were you going in such a hurry? Already mad. I said, I don't want to tell you. That's what God told me. God said, tell him. You don't want to tell him. I said, I, I don't want to tell you. And he goes, what? I, I don't want to tell you where I'm going. I said, could I not tell you? He said, well, yeah, you could not tell me, but I, glasses comes off. He goes, where were you going? I said, I don't want to tell you. I said, is it all right if I don't tell you? He goes, hat pulls back. and I mean, he's starting to relax. He said, look, you might get off. You might not get a ticket if you tell me where you're going. I said, well, is that a promise? I said, if you promise, I'll tell you where I was going. He said, well, all right, I'm not going to write you a ticket. Now tell me, but tell me the truth. I said, well, me and this guy are going to church. I said, we're preachers. And we're going to go preach tonight. He said, do you believe in the Bible? I said, I believe in the Bible. Do you believe in obeying the law of the land? I said, I, said, I believe it unless you're late. And then, according to Romans, I'm not under the law. <laughs> he said, I'm going to let you go. Will you slow down, not speed? I said, I'm not going to speed. You promise me now. You're a preacher. I said, I promise you, even though we're late, I will not speed. And he said, all right, no ticket. We got away from him. I let the other guy get over there. <laughs> We took off. We got to church. But see, the, the decrees that we make. Now, I'm not talking about just being stupid and going around just, you know, thinking you're cursing everything. That's superstition. But there is a truth to that. Your decrees. What you speak and what you say. And, we, and the Lord said, your hedge is made of your language. And what you speak and the things that you say. I, I know that, that it's, it's, it's just almost difficult to, to not criticize, critique preachers. And I know you, you're going to think, if you, especially if it's your first time here, when I start praying for people in a few minutes, you're going to go, what, 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 what is this? You know, and you're going to doubt, and you're going to, you know, and make a scrunchy face. And I'm going to see that. And, 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 and you know, you, you're going to get in a car and go, what was that? While everybody's getting healed, getting miracles, and God's touching them, you're scrutinizing your hedge, and you're putting doubt in your hedge when your hedge is made of decrees. A decree is what you say. You stand up and say, I've had enough. I'm taking no more of this. Or make a decree, God's greater than this, and my, my, God's going to give us revival, and I'm going to be a soul winner, and God's going to win my family to God. And I told my family that I told my family before when I won them to God, you're going to get saved whether you like it or not. I told one of my brothers that. He said, I'll never go to that DA church and I'll never show up there. And you, Don't ever bug me about it. I said, you're getting saved. You hear me and I don't care if you don't even like it. Well, there wasn't a lot of truth to that, but, but, there, but there, my attitude was where it needed to be kind of. 
And you know what he did? He came to church and got saved. And I told him, I said, you got saved. See, I told you. He goes, it didn't have nothing to do with you. That's just your brother, the way your brother operates. So decrees mean everything to you. If you can get these five things together, believe in the supernatural. Start getting more accustomed to the supernaturalness of this church. I saw the sister up there urging some of you to worship, but you didn't. I saw her up there. She was trying to bring this church to a place of supernaturalness. But some of you just don't realize the power of it. You don't understand the hedge is made of supernaturalness. And the more supernatural you believe and you act and you respond, if you didn't do nothing else but get out in the aisle with these people that worship and shout, you'd lose weight. You'd get more limber. You'd feel better about yourself. You'd overcome your fright. You know how you overcome jumping out of an airplane? Somebody throws you out of there, glory to God. And you're, you're free falling. Hallelujah. Praise God. And that's, you have, that's how you get over. You jump in a cold pond. because You jump, and that's how you get over that, that fear. And this church is, I'm telling you right now, you've got a great church. I know you're going to think, that brother wasn't even believe in us. I do, but I know where God wants to take this church. And I know he wants to put hedges up around this church. And the only way you can get a hedge put up around you is through the supernaturalness. It's through the blood of Jesus Christ. It's through your prayers. It's by your vows, by keeping your vows on a Wednesday night or midweek service. Maybe you, you could stay home if you wanted to. You have an excuse. You fought the traffic. You had a hard day. But instead you say to yourself, I'm going to get there. I don't care if I don't feel anything. I don't care if I sleep through the service. I'm going to get there. That affects your head. The offering pan comes by instead of saying, oh, my God, here's another offering. And instead of saying, they go, my God, this is an opportunity for me to break this spirit of poverty that's got a hold of my life. I'm going to give in Jesus' name right now. You see, it's your faith. It's your, it's your, it's, it's your, it's your faith that gets it done. And so your prayers, adding your prayers, pray, pray every day. Pray about everything. Keep your vows and then make your decrees. Could have, my, my mother used to make me so mad. We, everything that happened to us could have always been worse. This make me mad. Look, Mom, half my arm's cut off. Could have been worse. Could have been the whole arm. Look, Mom, the car ran over my ball. Could have been worse. Could have ran over you. You understand? You, you, don't, you, don't wanna, you don't hear your mother tell you that kind of stuff. Get out of here. Could have been worse. You want Mom to say, oh, my God, look at that arm hanging off. Just a little skin holding it. Look, the blood. Shh, shh, shh. Oh, that's so bad. You know, we've got to get to this place that we, every one of us respond to these five things in our life. I promise you, I don't care what your name is. I don't care where you live. I don't care it, what, how long you've been going to church. If you start working on these five things, God will put a hedge around your family, around your house. When Katrina was coming uh, through Jackson, Mississippi, the, uh, the uh, hurricane of, I think, 2005, when Katrina was coming through there, my wife and I and our families stood out in front of our homes and our house. We all live in the same areas uh, we did at that time. And we spoke against that hurricane. And we prayed the hedge of God around our house. Literally, physically, the tornado turned. And went back east. The path of the tornado was right through Jackson. And it turned and a shear came. That's what we prayed. God sent a shear against this uh, this uh, hurricane. And it turned and went the other way. And while everybody else had damage, this is the truth. No damage on my roof. Not one limb was torn down on my trees. My barn didn't blow up. wasn't blown away. Nothing on my property was hurt. Not any dents, not any dinks, not any trouble in my... Because God has a hedge that if you'll put those five things to work in your life, they will work in Jesus' name. Now, reach over 
and get someone by the hand. I want you right now, I'm not through, but I want you right now to pray. And I want you to ask God to give you the power to pray hedges right now in Jesus' name. I want you to make an intention, intention in your life that you're going to start praying hedges around your mother, around your grandmother, around your children. And from this day on in your ministry, you're going to be blessed. You're going to be favored. You're going to weather storms. You're going to go through situations. And it's not going to damage you. And you're going to give God the praise every time it happens. When the doctor says your artery's plugged up, but when they get in there, they're not plugged up. You're going to thank God. You're going to praise God. That's my hedge. Work it for me, Brother Winslow, in Jesus' name. Now lift your hands. Let go of that hand and lift your hands up and start praying and believing God right now in Jesus' name and thanking Him for the hedge of God. Now just a minute. We're going to activate something very powerful and very supernatural in this church. So there's a, there's a real estate miracle for you. God's got something to do about real estate. He wants to work a miracle for you. And God told me if I'd pray for you, lay hands on you, he would start turning your dollars into tens and your tens into hundreds. And he's going to reverse some things that's happening. There's a person in your life that took advantage of you. They lied to you. They cheated you. They shortchanged you. And there was nothing you could do about it. And all you had to do was endure it and suffer it. And God said, I'm going to go back in time and I'm going to bring that miracle back to you and I'm going to touch you. God has seen something in you the last year or the last few weeks. And God said, I want to touch you. I want somebody just to walk over there and pray for this sister right now. God said, I'm reversing the curse in Jesus' name right now. I'm going to let you get back what the enemy has stole from you. The devil's a liar. Somebody just come and pray for this sister here right now in Jesus' name. If you want your heads blessed. Come pray for hers right now. Everybody stretch your hand this way and let's pray and believe it's done right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, get a hold of this sister and use her, God. Touch her family. Let them start understanding the power of the supernatural. God, in a sense, she's dragging them to you. But God, I want you to touch them and enlighten every family member about the power of the Holy Ghost and what it can do for them right now in Jesus' name. Clap your hands if you believe God's doing it. <laughs> Lift your hands. I want to pray for you right now. I'm, I, 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 I'm not saying you have Alzheimer, but there's something that happened in someone that you knew very close to you that had some of that memory loss. And the Lord said, I'm going to touch you, and I'm going to touch your mind. I'm going to touch your spirit right now. And the Lord said, your mind's going to become so crystal clear in the spirit. There's some things supernaturally that God's going to open up for you, and God's going to give you in the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost. But there's an emptiness, there's a loneliness about someone that's not there in your life that used to be there. And you just ever since they've been gone, you're just not the same. And God said, I'm going home with you, and I'm going to visit your home today, and I'm going to cause joy to flood back in your soul and touch your spirit. There's a healing. Lift your hands. There's a healing that God's going to give you in your body right now. It's in your, the bones of your body. It's in some of the joints of your body. It's in your stomach, in your digestive tract. God's going to touch it right now, and God's going to settle that down and heal it. There will be no more of this escaping of gas and this uh, slight burning sensation at times on the top of your stomach. God's fixed to touch you and heal you. When I lay my hands on your head, God's putting a hedge up around your family and around your children. It wasn't very long ago that you told yourself, if some of my family would see how closer to God I've been getting, they'd be so surprised. Because I've always believed in God. But my faith is starting to really get active. I'm, I'm, I'm getting this outward Holy Ghost power starting to manifest itself in my life. And today it's going to manifest more than it's ever manifested. Lift your hands and let's pray. Everybody stretch your hand this way and let's just pray. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to touch this woman of faith and this woman that has tremendous faith. Romans 12 and, and 8 says, Unto every man is given the measure of faith. Lord, touch her body right now. Touch her loved ones, her friends. Let a real last day Holy Ghost revival break out into her life and her families. In the name of Jesus, I decree it done right now in Jesus' name. Can we lift our hands and just give our God the praise and thank Him in the name of Jesus? 
can, can, I, can I pray for you today? Go step out here and let me pray for you. I see all these young men in here, and God's fixed to give up. God's fixed to give up a, a, a real revival in the closing of this service to everyone that's 26 and under. I mean, there, there is a, at the closing of this service at the altar call, there's going to be a, a real outpouring on everyone that's 26 and under. Give me a couple ladies that stand with me. I want to pray for you. Now, first of all, there's been some tragedy in your past and some unexplainable things that have happened, and you still don't have all your answers. Because of that, you've been going through some things, and God's going to touch you. God's going to heal you. You're coming out of this fog in your mind. And this mental attack that's come over you and this oppression and depression that has come against you is coming to an end right now. Now, I'll tell you that part of your depression is, is chemically and it is physically. But some of it is because of things that have happened and things that you were sure about that became unsure. And people that were there that are not there and things of that nature, betrayal, false accusation, things of the past. You've had some battle over some uh, family things and had to battle to be where you are right now. And God said he's going to touch you and deliver you and he's going to get you back to where you were. Uh, about seven or eight years ago, you had a better place and God's going to get you back to that place right now. There's something that you're taking for pain and God said that you're not going to need it very much longer. He's going to heal your body and touch your body. Someone has told you that you have some form of arthritis or something of that nature. And that for, for you to get ready, it's going to get worse and worse. And, and, and it, this will fight it off for a while. But, and slowly, 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 you're noticing a, a tightness in your body and a change in your body. And God said, I want to touch that right now. If I was to tell you that God's fixed to move in there and you've got plenty of faith to get it done. And you're going to notice a difference. In just about five minutes, you're going to notice a difference when you walk. There's going to be a difference in your walk, in your legs, in your hips, your back. And God's going to touch it. I've already seen already today in the services and Last night, uh, I've already seen so many of these miracles of uncrippling. We had someone get out of a wheelchair and uh, walk for the first time. I mean, just amazing things that God's done. And God wants to touch this this uh, lady right now. Now, I see a, another woman who looks almost, she favors you a lot. And she's like, like you a lot. Not you, but someone like you. And, and she's not quite as old as you are. She's a little different in age. She has some of your mannerisms and some of these things. And God said, everything that I make happen for you right now and God makes happen for you is going to happen for her in Jesus' name. And God's going to touch you. Lift your hands up and let's pray. There's some, uh, there's some people you're praying for, some young people you're praying for. And, and you don't have the words to tell them. They need a change. They need to make some differences in their life. And you've been trying to find the words, but because you're very timid, you're very quiet, you're not one to always give advice to everybody. And God said, I'm going to give it for you. I'm going to speak for you right now. Now, I don't know what this, I don't, yes, I do. I know exactly who it is now. There is someone that went through some real physical violence. And it scarred them. And that's coming off of them right now in Jesus' name. They don't ever talk about it to anybody. They don't tell anybody the, what they feel and how it, it's changed their personality. and made them go inward. But God said, when I lay my hand on your head, it's going to be gone just like that. It's just going to disappear and be gone. When I lay my hand on your head, God said, I'm going to touch some things inside your mouth and your jaw. And there's some things going on in the alignment of your jaw and in the bones of your face. And God's going to touch that. There's something about one, one side of your hearing that's different than the other side of your hearing. You know what I'm talking about? God's fixed to touch that. that. When it gets real quiet, you hear a sound in your ear sometimes. And the Lord said, I want to remove that. How many believe God knows everything? Hallelujah. Now, I'm not a doctor, but this is how the Lord's showing it to me, and I'm seeing it. You have a fusion of a joint in your body where the, the joint is, the, the, is fusing together. It's calcifying. It's causing stiffness and tightness. And, and, and you can only move your head like one direction. You're free to move. The other direction, you're not as free to move. And actually, it started a long time ago with an injury, that a slight injury you had back there. And that began the process of it calcifying and uh, arthritic and, and messing up. And it's going to loosen up in your neck immediately when I pray for you. I don't know if you know this or not, if you've been to a doctor or not, but you've had some bouts with thyroid. And God's fixed to touch your thyroid right now. The Lord said you've, you've cried your last lonely tear. 
God said, it's over. Get it over with. Get through crying about it. Because the Lord said, you've cried your last lonely tear right now. There's something that, there's something that someone overlooked about you, and it has to do with money. And it's, there's something you should have got, gotten, but you didn't get it. And the Lord said, I'm going to make them revisit it. I'm going to pop it up, and I'm going to make them see it in Jesus' name. The Lord said, if you just put it in his hand, don't worry about it. Don't think about it. And God said, I'm going to get on this, and I'm going to be your lawyer, and I'm going to take care of it right now in Jesus' name. Now, how many believe that God can do all these things? The biggest thing, the greatest thing that you cried to God somewhere around the changing of the year, you cried to God something, and you told him, Lord, I've got to get closer to you than I've ever been. And I want you to help me overcome all these things and let me get close to you. And you vowed some vows to God. Remember I said the hedge is made of vows. You made some vows about 2015. God, if you'll do this, and I'll do this. And that's why you're here right now. You're here awaiting the supernatural to touch you. When I lay my hand on your head, I'm not going to shake you. I'm not knocking you down. I'm just going to barely touch your head when I do. God said, I'm going to move through your body, and I'm going to start touching you. And when you walk out of this church this afternoon, you're going to notice a difference in your legs, in your feet, in your back, in your spine. One of your legs is a little shorter than your other leg. And the Lord said, I'm going to grow that leg out. I've got on my phone right now a woman that we prayed for in Texas that grew three-quarters of an inch. I told her, when you go to bed tonight, you get up tomorrow, you're going to be three-quarters of an inch taller. She'd lost three-quarters of an inch in a car wreck, an accident in her back. She marked herself, went to bed, got up the next morning, and marked herself again, put a ruler up there, and took a picture of it, and sent it to me, and it was exactly three-quarters of an inch. And God's fixing to touch you right now because you've lost approximately a half inch or so in the last couple of years. Let's pray, everybody. Let's believe it's done in Jesus' name. Now, I'm preaching about hedges, and I'm very surprised that these things are opening up so powerfully right now, right here in this place, because I really thought we would do something else here. But God is starting to reach out. You've got to do what God wants you to do. You can't do what you want to do. You've got to do what God wants you to do. Now, let's believe it. If you'll help me, it'll happen. Lord, Jesus' name, I command it done right now. There it is. Lord, take the pain out of her body in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Go ahead. That's the Holy Ghost. Obey God. That's it. Speak in tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. Lord, in Jesus' name, I believe it. Go ahead. Take over, God. Woo! Well, she's putting her hedge up right now. Woo. I'm like the apostles. Why are you looking at us as if we have done this thing? This has been done by the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, grow that leg out. Get that arthritic condition out of her body. All right, I believe God's doing it. Everybody say, God's doing it. Everybody say, I'm believing God right now. All right, I believe in your faith. I want you to take 12 steps that way and 12 steps back. And let's see if there's any difference in your walking right now. In Jesus' name. Go ahead, don't worry. In the name of Jesus. You're not going to fall down. Is that hers? Is that her cane? Oh, my God, that's her cane. Hallelujah, Jesus. I, I didn't even see the cane. Oh, God, touch that. Yes, touch that leg right now, devil. You've got no power. Touch that leg, God. Devil, you've got no power. All right. Come on, walk back here to me in Jesus' name. I believe every step she takes is going to be better in the name of Jesus right now. How does that feel? Good. Any pain? No. No pain? No pain. Where do you think that pain went? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> How many believe that Jesus did it right now? 
Let's give our God some praise, everybody. Hallelujah. We pray for you. Come on, I think he deserves better than that. Let's put some hedges up around this church. Keep believing God. Have faith in him. I, I, I don't make light of anything God does. I don't want you to think, but I'm, I'm, I'm in a, I have a time frame here. And if I walk away quickly, I don't, please don't think I'm disregarding it. I'm just trying to cover what God wants me to cover. I get in my car and I drive to the next service. Man, I'm going crazy. I'm talking in tongues. I give God all the praise for everything he does. I've got the best job in the whole world. Who in the world could get out here and be hired by God to, to work like this? I'm so, glad, I'm so glad God fired me as a pastor. That's tough work, man. This is just a piece of cake up here. That's the man right there. That's the man. That's who's doing it. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. Uh, just put your hand on her back and let's pray for her right now in Jesus' name. God wants to touch you. I believe that God can touch anybody else. He can touch you also. Amen. Now, I see a lot of children. They're not little anymore, but I see them as the little children. A lot of children around you. And I see your prayers over them. You're a mother of many prayers. And you pray every day. And there's a place that you love to pray at. There's a place in your home that you love to pray. Matter of fact, you've got a favorite little chair that you sit in. And you love to pray in that chair. And that's your prayer chair. And you've told the Lord, this is where I meet you at. When I get here, I expect you to be here. And the Lord meets you every time right there. And there's a time, believe it or not, in the afternoon that you go there in the afternoons to pray and talk to God. You go different times, but there's an afternoon time that you sit down. I see something on a table. It's, it's something really nice and fancy uh, that's on top of your table. It's some kind of a little small covering on your table. And I see things sitting on your table, and I see some pictures in your house. And the Lord said every picture in your house is going to become an object of prayer right now. That when I pray for you, God said, I'm going to touch all these objects of prayer. There is somebody that God's going to send out right now, an angel from this church, and he is going to go get them because they are in a they are in relationship, they're in friendship with people that's leading them down to a place of incarceration. And God wants to break that off of them right now and get them back to where they're supposed to be and set them free and, and deliver them in Jesus' name. Matter of fact, there are, there are seven people in here that has loved ones that are bound by uh, uh, drugs and alcohol. And if you'll have faith and believe it. Now, last night we had four people that were delivered of drugs and alcohol. I mean, instantly laid hands on them. They started speaking in tongues. And, and I mean, you, they, were, they were really bound up. And God set every one of them free last night in the service. And I believe God can set, not, not last night, it was, um, I'm getting my services mixed up. Where was I at? Brother Pryor's church. What night? When was I there? Give me a second. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm all over the place. I was there Wednesday night. And there were four people there that they brought to church. And he told me after church, they'd never been to church. I said, you don't have to tell me that. I knew that. He said, we got them out of a place where the, the, they were bound up. And he said, they all got the Holy Ghost tonight. And they were even praying for each other. It was amazing. I want to pray for you. You also need stability and strength in your walking, in your bones of your body. What is it? My knee your, been your knee. And it would definitely be God if your knee stopped hurting right now. and Just quit. It would definitely be God, wouldn't it? And because no medicine you take, no nothing you're, you're doing is able to stop that pain from happening. And so we would just to pray for that right now. It would be just one little small great sign of God's power to take and to heal us. But that's not the only thing hurting in her body. She has a hip that's really bad. And she needs a healing in her hip. And uh, mid-back area needs a touch from God. She's had some sinus infections. And uh, during the holidays... She had these headaches that were brought on, and God said he wants to touch her right now. She does not have Alzheimer, but she has had some memory relapse the last couple of years, slowly, gradually. God said, I'm going to reverse that right now. Your mind's going to get sharp as it can be. You're not going to start calling everybody by different names, although you know who they are. But God said, you're going to start remembering, and your mind's going to get so sharp. Matter of fact, when I pray for you, God's going to touch you in your blood because there's something going on in your blood. That needs a miracle from God. These numbers that are too high, they've got to come down. And I'm going to believe they're going to come down right now. I see someone telling you and saying to you, Mother, don't eat this, don't eat that. You know it's not good for your stomach and it's not good for your digestive. And, and 
yeah, and 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 I see them worried about your stomach and 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 your and, and you've got a problem uh, in your stomach. And uh, it's almost like ulcers, like that, and they're down there where your intestine connects to your lower part of your stomach. You also have had a hiatal hernia, where if there's a release of acid on the top of your stomach. You no longer eat the food that you was raised to eat, that you love to eat, stuff that I like to eat, hot stuff, and I mean, man, tortillas, and I mean, you know, and 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 uh, chili. Hallelujah, glory to God. I mean, I eat them like going crazy. And uh, I just pray I just stay healed because I love a hot, I like to just cry going, <laughs> and eat enchiladas, man. Just, just your nose open, <laughs> you breathe good. You don't need no medicine. Glory to God. Just eat a chili. I'm going to pray for you. God's going to touch you. You're a precious woman of faith. God said for you to quit minimizing your faith and quit minimizing who you are. And quit telling yourself you're, you're, you're not good for nobody. You're not doing any good for anyone. Yes, you are. You're a woman that's godly and a woman of faith and a woman that's pure and a woman that's right. And we need to see people like you in 2015 in the house of God. And God's going to alleviate your problem in your legs and in your knees and in your hip and in your digestive problem. The Lord said, wait 24 hours, then eat whatever you want to eat and test it. See if you can do it. Now, I prayed for a woman. I called this woman out and I said, you have... Um, a thing going on in your digestive system. You're, you're on a very small diet. You can only eat certain things. You can't go out. You haven't been out to eat in years. I'm gonna lay hands on and pray for you. God's gonna heal you. Gonna be anything you can, anything you want to eat, you can eat it. I got ready to pray for her, and I said, "Wait a minute. Do you have a daughter?" She said, "I do." And I said, "Where's she at? Over there." And I said, "She has the same thing, doesn't she?" She said, "She does." I said, "Bring her over here. God's gonna heal her." I started to pray, and I said, "Wait a minute. You got another one." I said, does she have the same thing? She does. Bring her. Now, I'm not knocking nobody in case you know that maybe you were at that service. I'm, so I'm, I'm, not, being, I'm not down on this, the dad. But he kind of was a little doubter. I seen him looking at me. And that doesn't bother me. You can stare a hole in me. It ain't going to move me. Hallelujah. After church, I'll go get something to eat and drink a Diet Coke and belch. And I won't even worry about what you're thinking. <laughs> I know what I believe in. Nothing changes me. How about you? Amen, you ain't changing my faith. I know that what God does. And so I laid hands on all three of them in Jesus' name. You know what I told them to do? Go eat. Go out and eat. She told me when I went back there, she said, My husband said, If you go eat and you get sick, I'm going to blame the preacher. She said, Would you quit talking like that? We're not going to get sick. They ate ice cream. and I mean, if anything, they should have got sick because of everything. she told me everything they ate. I said, my God, I didn't tell you to tempt the Lord. Just go enjoy a meal. Not sick. Have not been sick. If God can do it for them, God can do it for our sister here right now. Now, let's, let's stretch our hand and let's get ready to pray for this dear little sister. We're going to pray for her knee and God will just Put back in there all that stuff that needs to be in there. And that lubrication's going back in that knee. And, and uh, you also have had some problem in this bone on this leg. And I'm going to pray. And God's going to touch that bone in Jesus' name. And I'm going to pray one more miracle for you. And I think I'm going to be through. I've got to get this hedge thing finished. There is somebody that was in the work of God. And they were working for God. And God was using them. And they lost that momentum. And they're not doing that anymore. And God said, I want to visit them, and I want to touch them, and I want to pull them in. They felt a special touch on their life to do something for God. They're not doing that right now. They're doing something else. And when I pray for you, God's going to revisit them and talk to them, and they're going to get reconsecrated in 2015. And they're going to get back to doing the Lord's work and the Lord's will. And God's going to rejuvenate their faith in Jesus' name. All right, let's pray it in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, you see that leg. We've challenged the devil. We've challenged Mr. Arthur, arthritis to pack up his bags and get out of here in the name of Jesus. I believe when this sister stands on her feet and begins to move her legs, in Jesus' name, this pain is going to start leaving. Lord, in the name of Jesus, will you send this pain back to the pits of hell from whence it has come? In Jesus' name, Lord, I want you to reconstruct it. I want you to put the cushion, the pad back in it, God. In the name of Jesus, loose this leg right now. Heal this woman. In Jesus' name we pray. Stand to your feet. Let's just give God about 15 seconds of praise.
Lift your hands. Lord, loose this leg and remove the pain in the name of Jesus. Step out here and let's take a few steps. Come on, just walk right down the front down here. About seven or eight steps in Jesus' name. Lord, let there be no pain. It's not hurting. No pain? No, it's not hurting. Where'd it go? (laughs) To hell. To hell. Hallelujah. Come on, let's clap our hands to the Lord and give Him praise right now. This is a miracle, church. Come on, I want everybody. Get on your feet. Let's give God a thunderous hand of praise. He's given this church the best. You, Pastor, God's fixed to put some hedges up around this church. Okay, be seated for about 10 minutes. Give me about 10 to 15 minutes here. and We've got to have time to get around the front of this church and let these hedges start coming up. God revealed those hedges to me, and, and I started praying hedges around my family. I'm not a know-it-all. I'm not special. I don't have any greater faith than anybody else. But I, I start putting these hedges around my family. Now, I first admit that when God told me about these hedges and the cons- what consisted in the hedge, what the components of the hedge was, it took me 40 years to get it. I told the Lord, I'm not telling nobody. They get it on their own, just like I did. God convinced me, oh, yes, you'll do it. If you want your family blessed, you want your kids to have hedges for them, you'll, you'll tell it. Anybody, anytime I tell you, I want you to preach it and tell it. And so I said, I'll do it, whatever you want, God. And so anytime I can share it, tell it. I put it on a card. I've got it on a card that I pass out sometimes when I go. I don't have any with me, but I, I, I pass them out. I give it to everybody. The first day I started that prayer was there in Los Angeles, and I started praying the prayer. I immediately went to a, a, a church close by. wasn't even Pentecost. I just went there. There was in the office. I said, can I pray here a few uh, minutes? Yeah, you can. I went in there and prayed, and I started praying. God put a hedge around my children. Put a hedge around my wife. Put a hedge around my ministry. Put a hedge around me physically. Put a hedge around our finances, our money. Put a hedge around all of my brothers and my sister. I have one sister. Put the hedge, God, around every one of them. And I prayed that hedge. Every day I got up and I prayed the prayer hedge. Like I read the Word of God. I prayed the hedge prayers, prayer around my family. I know what it consists of. I plead the blood over my life. Not a day goes by. I don't walk to a pulpit. that I don't plead the blood. Lord, cover me with your blood. In Jesus' name, I can't do your will without the blood. i got to have it. I pray the blood over all of my children. The third day that I prayed that blood, uh, I got up in the morning, and, and on that third day I prayed the prayer, and the Lord spoke to me, and he said, Call your sister Carol and ask her, can she be baptized? And will she be baptized in Jesus' name? Forty years ago, when I was winning my family to God, I went to my sister's house, and I sat down to open the Bible up. We were raised Catholics. And I opened the Bible up, and I was showing her Jesus' name baptism. And she threw me out of the house. She's the oldest girl, and there's only one sister. Now, I'm going to tell you something. It's bad enough to have sisters. But when she's the oldest, it ain't no fun. And she she raised us. She took care of us. Mama had to work. And, um, and so she was always the babysitter. She cleaned the house up. Her job was to clean the house up. And when Mama got home, she was through. And this is what my sister would do. She'd clean the house up trick us to go outside and then lock the doors and the windows and would not let us back in till mama got back from work because we messed the house up it would be hot out there in louisiana and we'd knock on the windows and she'd open them up a little bit and we said we're hungry she'd give us bread and peanut butter out of the window and shut the window down we're thirsty the water hoses out. I'm proof right now that you can drink out of water hoses and you will live. I don't know what these doctors are thinking about. And we drink out of water. The worst whipping I ever got was not my mama. The worst spanking I ever had was my sister. She left one of the bedroom windows unlocked and, and I was sneaking in to get something out of the refrigerator. 
And she caught me, and she, there was a two-by-four in the closet that we used to hold up some things. And when I slipped over into the room, and she took the two-by-four and beat me back out of the window. And she said, you're not messing this house up. And when Mama would come in, we'd tell Mama we'd be outside sweating hot and, and hungry. And but Carol won't let us in the house. Well, it doesn't look like you died. You're all right. <laughs> Anything happens to you, I'll make another one look just like you. Don't worry about it. That was the opinion back in the days. Nobody cared if we ran the roads and somebody kidnapped us. Well, good. That's one less to feed around here. Hallelujah. It's a different day back then. And, uh, and, and, and that was my sister. She had throw, threw me out of the house. I said, Jesus' name, baptism. I mean, she went crazy. Get out of this house. And don't you ever bring Jesus' name, baptism, into this house ever again. I don't ever want to hear about that Pentecostal stuff in Jesus' name, baptism. And she threw me out of the house. Now, she loved me, and I loved her. She's my sister, the only one I've got. And uh, I'm not the only brother, but uh, I'm the oldest brother. And we loved each other, but I never brought it up ever again. Not would I dare ever tell her anything about Jesus' name, baptism. Just on that third day that I prayed that, God spoke to me and said, Call your sister and just say, Will you be baptized in Jesus' name? I said, Oh, God. I will call Carol. What if she hollers at me and, you know, and next time she sees me, throws me down or something, you know? We were taught you can't hit girls. They never taught girls they couldn't hit us. And, uh, and, and I didn't want to do it. So I thought to myself, I was preaching revival in Louisiana and about a two-hour drive from my hometown. And so I called my brother on the phone. I said, Jim, Miss Gordon, yeah, what's up? I said, God wants you to call Carol. <laughs> he said, what? I said, yeah, 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 God wants, wants you to call. Well, about what? And I said, about being baptized in Jesus' name. He said, I'm not calling her about baptism in Jesus' name. She threw you out of the house and promised you'd never bring it up again. I said, well, somebody's got to go talk to her. I said, she needs to be baptized. And the Lord told me she'd do it. I said, so you need to call her. He said, I'll, I'll go by there. I'm not going to preach to her. I'm not going to try to encourage her. I'm just going to walk in there, sit down and say, will you be baptized in Jesus' name? And if she doesn't, I'm leaving right then. So the phone rings. I answer the phone. He says, my God, she said yes. The power of a hedge prayer is unbelievable. And I said, she said yes. Did she argue with you? No. I said, Carol, will you be baptized in Jesus' name? She said, yes, I will. I said, oh, my God. I said, well, I, 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 and you think about it. I said, where, where, where are we baptized her at? He said, well, I'll ask my pastor and see if she'll be baptized there. And so he asked the pastor. The pastor said, yes, and we'll do it. And it was all scheduled. And God started talking to me. God spoke a prophetic word to me for her. So I'm getting bold now. After Jim, yeah, here I come. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'll give you a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, chicken. Uh, but anyway, I said, no, we're going to baptize her up at this church where I'm preaching at, Winfield, Louisiana. Probably nobody even knows where that is. And I was preaching to Winfield, Louisiana, and I told Jim, ask her if she'll come. So they said, yes, she's coming. So she comes to church that night. I asked the pastor, will you, bab will, will, will you let me baptize her? And he said, yes. And so she shows up. When she walks in, I, I, she just looks like my mother. I mean, the, 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 she, it's just the way she looked. And I remember my mother was baptized in Jesus' name. And I just started crying and weeping. I couldn't get, uh, you know, ever get that little thing stuck in your throat. Look, I can't talk. You know, and you're crying. And I, I knew I couldn't baptize her. And I, I asked the pastor, look, pastor, please baptize her. And, and I said, well, me and my brother go down to the, in the area of the baptistry with you, but you need to baptize Carol. I hugged her and I said, Carol, oh, that's so great. That's so good. She said, I know, I know. And I said, You're going, God's going to give you the Holy Ghost. She said, yeah. Kind of hesitate a little bit. And, and I said, just mama's up there in heaven that's looking at you and so glad that you're getting baptized and everything. And so she gets ready and, you know, the preacher goes behind the baptistry. I go back there. My brother goes back there. Here comes my sister, my oldest sister, my bossy sister. My tough sister, but the way the hedge has got around her, and, and God is God is doing things, the power of the hedge. So she's there in the baptistry, and I'm looking at, it and I'm just I'm just bawling, squalling, and 
The preacher says, in the name of Jesus Christ, under the water she goes. She comes out of that water and throws her hands up, begins to speak in other tongues. And God fills her with the Holy Ghost. And she speaks in tongues and speaks in tongues and speaks in tongues. And her eyes are closed and she's praising God. And my God, I'm looking at the clock and I'm thinking, Jesus, and you know, they're singing it again, singing it again and again. And the preacher, the pastor's looking at me, don't know if he ought to go down or what. And you know, it's that kind of little thing like that. I'm, so I said to myself, well, I'll just lean down here and I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to just say something spiritual to let her understand. Got to get up and get out of there. So I lean over there and she's crying and praying. And I said, Carol, <laughs> just a few minutes. You're going to feel the spirit lift up just a little bit. Just a little bit. And that's when you're going to get up and get out of the baptistry. And I'm trying to do it spiritual. She, her hands are up. She goes, do you want me in or do you want me out? I thought you wanted me in for 40 years. And now I'm in here. I can't stay. I said, Stay as long as you want. We'll pull the curtains and you can just stay in there forever. Hallelujah. She said, that's what I thought. That's my sister. You understand what I'm trying to say? And we closed the curtain and she just talked in tongues as long as she wanted to talk. Are you ready for God to put around you a hedge of supernatural power and authority? Stand to your feet right now in Jesus' name. Come on, musicians. Let's get ready to believe God. I want you to lift your hands and give God some praise and get ready. As soon as you step out of those chairs and you come to the front of this altar, the pastor and I are going to pray the power of the heads around you. You're going to take these five things and you're going to start promoting your hedge you're going to put hedges around your kids around your children we've seen so many miracles happen in our family since we started praying the power of the hedge one of my little grandsons a great little kid had ocd we prayed for him we believed god on that third day that same day that god spoke to my sister god spoke to my daughter amber in austin texas and she was at a women's prayer meeting and my little Bryce was at the house, OCD, wash his hands 50 times in an hour. You touch his plate, he wouldn't eat off of it. We'd go to the drive through sometimes and it just, just something would just set him off. And he wouldn't eat the food and he'd set it down. He'd go sometimes for two or three days with eating so very little that he'd just cave in and starve and just start eating something. And then stop right in the middle of it. OCD, bad case of it. And on that third day, God spoke to her. She was at a prayer meeting, and God said, he's healed. Right out of the blue. She wasn't even praying about it. And God said, Bryce is healed. She went home, and she put a plate down, and she let him start eating. And she said, Bryce, do you mind if I have some of your chicken nuggets? That was a no-no. He said, sure, Mom, you can have one. And she took a bite of it and ate it. said, can I have a little drink of your drink? Sure, Mom. And she drank, and he drank behind her. And in that same night, God healed Bryce of OCD. He came out of it. He's been different at school. He's a straight-A student. His whole life has turned around. Some things God does by the laying on of hands. Some things God does during a song service. Some things God does during the preaching. But there are some times that God allows you to pray the hedge around your family, around your marriage, around your health, around your finances. And when you start praying that hedge, suddenly something begins to happen. Satan is on the outside. God is on the inside. Sickness is on the outside. Healing is on the inside. Now, how many, honestly, maybe it's not everybody. It should be everybody. But how many in this church would say, Brother Winslow, I want it. I'm coming for it. I want it in my ministry. I want it in my life. There are three ministries in this church service tonight that God is going to put the power of the heads around you.
And I'm telling you, every preacher in this church, take the notes. Go preach it like God gave it to you. Go tell everybody about the power of the hedge of God and what it consists of. And let them start getting results. Are you ready in Jesus' name? Let's pray. God, get us ready. Cover us with your blood. Cleanse us right now. It doesn't matter if I failed last night, made a mistake. I ask you to forgive me right now. And I'm coming to get this hedge around me. I've been inundated with trouble. I've been attacked by the enemy. My nerves are on end. We're on a state of alert in our finances. We're in need of a miracle. And God said, if you'll make a circle and get on the inside of it, I'll meet you on the inside of that circle. If you'll get in there with God right now, the Holy Ghost will come upon you. I want the most hungry to step out right now. I want the most desperate. I want the ones that's got to have this today. But you've got to go home with it right now. Come out right now and get to this altar and give God what he wants in Jesus name and God will give you what what you need right now they're going to start singing we're going to start laying hands on people all the ministry in this church will you help brother Winslow just lay hands on people in this church I'll be speaking a word of faith into you and giving you a word of faith many of you but right now it's done it's finished it's over The attack is gone. Your house belongs to you and God now. You're going home and it's going to be different. You get to that job, it's going to be different. Your health is changing. Sickness is fleeing out of your body. Everybody lift up your voice and praise Him and call it done. Dig in right now. If God touches you, I want you to turn and pray for somebody else. Sugar diabetes, you have no power over this house. High blood pressure, you have no power over this house. Cancer, you have no power over this house. I want you to turn if there's somebody beside you that's 26 or under. I want you to lay hands on them right now. Look around you. If there's anybody 26 and under, lay hands and pray right now in the name of Jesus.
a firm fan.